Thank you for joining me here. Matt, it's a pleasure. Thank beautiful, you. Beautiful uh, Cafe Columbia. I'm glad <laughs> to have you here. Uh, so, uh, Charlie, what I wanted to talk to you about today was you know, your business and how you got into your uh, business now. Of, uh, you do systems. Uh, uh, well, explain what you do because it's, well, because it's, it's a little different than a lot of people. It's not like you're just a fundraising consultant. Most people think of a fundraising consultant. They'll run a capital campaign, uh, feasibility study, et cetera, and then help the campaign. Yeah. I strictly focus on the systems, and and that's the the advancement system, the fundraising system, because I had an undergraduate degree in accounting and so on. Okay. I, I also work with accounting systems and through this whole process I've gotten more familiar with membership systems so I'll get with all of those and geez this this particular organization needs a ticketing system so I'll help them find that one as right. well. So that's a, that's a very interesting niche because especially now that everybody is has to be computerized. I mean, I, I, you know, we, I remember, and I'm sure you do, when when uh, we all had card files and all that, and to, to yes. bring and, and sort of bring uh, everybody into that, uh, and then to see it evolve uh, is is really cool. So, um, how uh, uh, real quickly, how, how did you get into this work? Because, like you said, your background's in accounting, and I, and I, we've talked before, and you. Uh, worked with uh, one of the big accounting firms at one point. I, I worked with Arthur Anderson and right. I, I described them as one of the big eight that didn't make it to the final four. Yeah. I left Anderson and worked for Shared Medical Systems okay. up here in the Philadelphia area mm -hmm. and uh, after about 10 years with them it was just the right time to move on and uh, I decided after saying one week in my leaving process, well I know I don't want to be a consultant and I know I don't want to work for myself. Mm. I asked myself the question the next week, why do I not want to work for myself? And why do I not want to be a consultant? And I determined that was probably the best thing I could do. I'd had a 10 years of experience with Anderson. I'd had another 10 years of experience as a product manager. Right. So I knew a lot of this stuff. And y y you look at systems and a, and a hotel reservation system or a hospital management system or a fundraising advancement system, it just got so many similarities. Sure. And sure. so uh, I, I took this on and I've been doing it for 25 years now. That's really cool. So you've, uh, uh, and, and I know you've built up a, a great reputation and a, um, uh, and you know, people look to you specifically. So how do you, uh, how do clients come to you? How do folks find uh, I mean, not, yes, you specifically, maybe, but just generally, uh, what would you recommend to people to say this is how you find your clients? My experience was early on in the process of getting new clients. I joined NSFRE, National <laughs> Society of Fundraising Executives, sure. that, it, that is now the Association of Fundraising Professionals. Sure. I joined CASE, and I went to And that's the higher ed equivalent to exactly. NSFRE. Right. Most case seems to be now considering geez we'll talk for other than education mm. even though case is council for advancement and support of education sure you know anybody that's willing to pay them money they'll bring into a conference and whatever so sure. uh, but those two organizations I just started meeting people and shaking hands and giving out business cards and uh, Okay. B because I'm one of maybe five people that specifically do what I do. Oh, that's interesting. In the United States, and my five biggest competitors are some of my best friends. Right. Yeah. So and I, I know one of them, uh, uh, our friend Terry. Absolutely. A and uh, yeah, I, I I can see why. You know, he's yeah, a good guy. I, and uh, got another. Uh, Terry's in the Midwest. Uh, Jim Williamson is up in New England. That's funny, I know Jim from years ago, yeah. John Taylor is down mm -hmm. in, in the Durham area. Sure. And uh, Robert Weiner is out in San Francisco. No, don't so, think I met Robert, but yeah, well, all the rest of them I, I you certainly know, know. So Robert gets an RFP for something on the East Coast and says, Charlie, why don't you take this? Hmm. And I get something for the West Coast and I say, Robert, I'm not going to tell you about this, I'm going to do it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, we're on good terms. But uh, yeah, uh, and Robert has worked on a project. Uh, I got a project at Columbia University. Yeah, it was the question was, 
we're three billion into our four billion dollar campaign how can we use our systems to more effectively collect that last billion sure so robert and uh, another guy and i worked that project and it's you know so we we have a high regard for each other and share skills share clients that's cool and it's a win-win for everybody yeah yeah excellent so it, it's uh, uh, kind of an association but it's informal because you're you're very informal co connecting with but, people but sure. when we go and by the way there's a, a new fundraising uh, it's a, an advancement services organization sure which is AASP the American Association of Oh, geez, I forget what it is. AASP, oh, Association of Services, maybe. I don't know. Advan <laughs> American Advancement Services Professionals. Okay. So I'm doing a hell of a job on missing, misrepresenting them. <laughs> John Taylor has been president of that. A number of other folks have been presidents there. So Sure. But uh, that so, And that's different than um, uh, APRA, uh, the um, prospect research people. Exactly. Right, yeah. But we will occasionally get research people coming into AASP. Oh, well, makes sense. You know, yeah. and, and but mostly gift processors, report writers, uh, folks who are s supporting the fundraising uh, system on campus. Yeah, yeah, that you infrastructure. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's really cool because my observation is that over the years there's been a, a lot of specialization that's really been helpful by way of these associations. Uh, Case and um, and AFP are broader, uh, but when General, you come, yeah. yeah, but but then these subgroups really make a difference. Uh, even to by way of mission, I know um, uh, there's at least for a while there was a group of engineering college development officers that would meet and focus on just the things that had to do with that mission as opposed to the systems or whatever aspect of that. So, um, uh, was there a time when you were about to give up on consulting for nonprofits? I was uh, threatening to fire myself, but I wasn't going to give up. But <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, when you're the chief cook and bottle washer, you're the president, you're the salesman, sure. you're the installer, you're the doer, uh, and I just I was having some tough times financially, not getting new clients, and then within several months, I was doing quite well, thank you. And so, so, so you kind of uh, dissuaded yourself of firing yourself. Exactly. That way. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, what would you say to people who are in the middle of that? Uh, you know, because it happens to everybody. I mean, you know. You know, your point. It happens to everybody. They're just ebbs and flows in business. Hang in there. Yeah. It's, it's just. You know, if if you've had if you've had ten years of crummy business, maybe it's time to move on, look for something else. Mm. But if you've had ten years of uh, seven, eight years were excellent, and two years, you know, yeah. year four yeah. and year ten were kind of weak, eh, you know, you can do it. So stick with it. Yeah, yeah, well, that makes a lot of sense. And and the economy will will play against you at times. Mm. When when uh, you know the 2008, right? You know when the the economy tanked in early 2000s, when uh, the the dot com bubble. You know, it's hard to get business when when the businesses you're trying to work for are saying, "Oh, we can't spend any money." Right. Right. But, yeah. That ripples through. Yeah. 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 So if somebody were uh, coming to you starting out today, what what would you tell them? What what would be you know sage words of advice, maybe or not so sage? Uh, <laughs> I think the first thing, I would not tell them anything. I would just start asking them questions. Ah. Uh, I find it's easier to lead people with questions, and if they come up with the ideas, they'll believe them a lot better than if they come from a consultant. Fair enough. So asking questions, what exactly some of the questions you're asking me now, how, how are you getting into this? What, what reasons do you think you'll be successful? Mm. What, what uh, do you have uh, uh, an emergency fund? Do you have a stash of cash that if things don't get rolling for six months, you're not going to lose your kids' tuition to school and, right. and the mortgage on your house? And, you know, maybe you depend on your spouse's income. Right. But all of those things you need to be looking into. And, you know, if you can, if you can get the ball rolling... Matt, I had one of my consulting friends said, Charlie, if you make it through the first seven years, 
you'll just be answering the phone and you'll be successful. Well, silly me, I took that as a fact <laughs> and right. did virtually no marketing, marketing in my seventh year. And uh, <laughs> right, <this> is, <laughs> things went down. <laughs> so I then started attending conferences and responding to yeah. RFPs. And uh, now you said the the M word, marketing, and I, I know a lot of people, you know, are uh, they, they like to do what they do, whatever that core is, but. Marketing, they, they feels like a different thing. How, how did uh, did you ever come in to that? I mean, did did tell me? Well, you know. my ten years with Anderson was uh, a lot of training as to doing as well as marketing at the mm. same time. Okay. So mostly the partners were the ones doing the marketing, but yeah. if you aspired to that, you would respond to RFPs. You'd go out and pound the flesh, shake hands, and that sort of thing. And, sure. You know, so uh, there, there's all kinds of email marketing. Uh, I think WordPress is a, a tool that you use yep. it yeah. for, you know, for, for building a website, and that's got a lot of tools for email tracking and marketing and so on. Mm -hmm. So just many organizations there. I. Did I mention Barnes and Roach? And uh, well, we talked earlier. You yeah, did, yeah. But whether it's Barnes and Roach or uh, Ketchum or any of the other Marts and Lundy, sure. Many of those firms, and I worked for with Barnes and Roach. I worked with Campbell and Company. Mm -hmm. So I was their systems guy. Sure. And you know they <clears throat> they did some of their my marketing for me. And that's a really good uh, point that you can collaborate with folks who are uh, doing, like you said, the marketing for you, that you're providing a good, valuable service to them, Absolutely. and they're providing you a service by uh, providing those clients. That and working with Barnes & Roach occasionally, they had me come in and do a presentation to all their staff. Mm. Just give me an, give them a sense of what do I do, Sure. how do I do it, What what's the typical things you look for in a, uh, you know, a client that might have some business for you. Yeah. And so I've shared that and made presentations to them. And so you've been preparing them almost like uh, somebody would a volunteer. Exactly. Yeah, to get them uh, well ready put. to, yeah. to um, uh, multiply your efforts for you. Yeah. Sure. So being in the um, nonprofit arena for as long as you have been, Tell me, how do you find the nonprofit culture differs from before when you were in the for-profit culture? Uh, I, I still remember uh, one of the vice presidents of ad advancement at some place saying, "Well, do you have a, a nonprofit rate?" And yeah, I have a nonprofit rate. It's my rate because <laughs> right. w when I work for nothing but nonprofits, uh, that is your rate. That is my rate. <laughs> right. So. Uh, you know, it, it's been it's been good working for nonprofits, and I'm comfortable with them. Uh, my parents were pretty philanthropic, and that that led me a a, mm -hmm. a, a good. But work, it, compared to working, say, at Anderson or other places, did you find uh, a difference in working in a for-profit culture versus a nonprofit culture? Oh, I think I'm so old I forget working in the for-profit culture. <laughs> now, the, the, the similarities are you need to get a return on your investment, you need to uh, have objectives for what you're doing, you need to lay sure. out game plans, you need to identify who's going to work, whether it's profitable or a for-profit organization or a non-profit organization. I know many people say we're a non-profit organization, but we didn't plan it that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, right. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's very similar, but there are some very different differences, too. Okay. You know, the, the non-profit organizations uh, hopefully build up an endowment so they've got some ongoing funds, but they're always trying to raise more money mm -hmm. uh, so that they can have a, a an endowment, a foundation, or whatever, to help them cover their their slow times. Yeah, sure, sure. What kind of infrastructure things would you tell folks that this is particularly important to pay attention to, or not? Maybe there's something you say. Listen, I always thought that was important, and never was. I asked myself many times, should I incorporate? Hmm. You know, should I be a uh, an Inc. Uh, uh, LLC, yeah. S Corp. Exactly. Yeah, right. or, or should I just be a sole proprietor? Sure. 
And for 25 years, I've been a sole proprietor. Interesting. You know, I, I looked at it, to, uh, and the, the couple of times where, you know, somebody has said, you did a crappy job, and I said, can I work for you on a gratis basis and do it over? Mm. You know, and out of 200 clients, maybe one or two. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that. Yeah. And <clears throat> working with uh, Notre Dame, uh, they, they indicated I needed to have specific insurance. Right. Because recently, within recent times of that project, they had had a consultant go up on their roof and fall off. Hmm. Well, I, I promised him I would not go on the roof. <laughs> you wouldn't be climbing the roofs or anything. Yeah, it's so not going to lay any cable up there for them. That's not no, what you do. No. So yeah. uh, it, we worked that out, and it was fine. Okay. And, uh, you know, so I've, I've had a couple of jobs where they required uh, some kind of insurance, sure. liability insurance, and uh, probably for two years out of my 25, I have had myself covered by insurance. Hmm. Okay. Whoopee. Fair so, enough. Uh, so that, that's good to know. That, I mean, you know, folks have that perspective that uh, um, it, it's, it's definitely thought-provoking for people that way. Yeah. yeah. A another thing I recall from my startup year was I came to June and I realized, oh, darn, I need to pay estimated taxes. Ah, uh, yes. And if you're living on a shoestring, yeah. you don't just have estimated taxes stuck in a bank account. Sure. Well, I borrowed from somebody and paid those taxes and then made a decision early on for any check that I get from a client, 20% is going into a tax account. So sure. I'm not allowed to touch that. Yeah. And I've put another uh, chunk of away for for charitable deductions and for retirement. So okay. basically I figure I get 50% of any bucks I get mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what I'm gonna live off of. Okay. And But that first tax challenge was, yeah. opened my eyes. Kind of got you started on got, that. <laughs> got me started in the right direction and so there you been go. working fine. So now you uh, brought up, uh, and we talked a little bit about this before we uh, got on uh, in our, uh, interview here that uh, you're cycling into uh, a new phase of your life uh, and that people actually can cycle into this phase to retire <laughs> yeah. I've been if, uh, mm. a, a, as a consultant this is actually possible so how did you make this possible well the the mention I made before of I'm putting away taxes I'm putting away money for charitable contributions when you're in fundraising, you better be seen as putting away money for charitable contributions. Yes, well, that's true. And whether you're giving it to clients or others, your alma mater. But I also put away a chunk of change for, for taxes. Okay. So, you know, I, I had that stuff building up. And now I've talked so long that I've forgotten your original question. <laughs> whether, uh, I mean, how, how you made retirement happen. Oh, you know, one of the things was I put away 20% uh, uh, for retirement. Mm-hmm. And since I've been earning, I've been earning over a, you know, six-figure income. Okay. You know, so putting away a chunk of that every year has has allowed me to, number one, have have money that money for retirement. Mm -hmm. Part of your taxes go into Social Security. Sure. So, you and I are probably both on the cusp now of, well, geez, well, Social Security exists yeah. throughout my retirement period. Um. I'm banking on it, we'll work, you know, but I've got a num number of other funds. Yeah. So, so yeah. just money so, set so aside. It, but annuities. it's like anything yeah. else. You have to start early and put away yeah. and move forward uh, with that. And, and then um, uh, there really is a, a light at the end of the tunnel. Because um, I, I have folks, you know, I, it comes up every once in a while that, well, this is nice, you're a consultant, but how do you retire? Because they can't, ima first of all, they can't imagine not working. But second of all, uh, it's building up that reserve so that you can consider that. Yeah. yeah. Well, one one of the things that's been useful for me is, uh, as as a Christian, I have looked through the Bible, and nowhere in the Bible is the word retirement in there. So, 
<laughs> I, I continue doing uh, volunteer work. I've, I've gotten involved with my church's nationwide organization. Sure. And, and I'll be doing some volunteer work for them. Okay. One of my other clients was recording for the blind and dyslexic. Sure. So I've volunteered with them to read, whether it's a text or whatever, something that they want to share with their constituents. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I'm, I would go bonkers if I had to just, you know. It turn the and switch and say, well, that's it. I'll yeah. eat t I'll watch TV and eat bonbons for the rest of my life. Nah, not going to do that. <laughs> And, Besides, and, just bonbons melt, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? You can't do that. All right. Well, Charlie, this has been great. I've really uh, enjoyed talking to you. Is there anything that um, you want to leave the audience with? Is there anything out there that you think uh, would be helpful for anybody? The, the thing that's, that I've found is helpful is you need to look at your business and plan for it. And some of that planning is for marketing. Some of that planning is for quality executing the project. Some sure. of that is for, geez, I need to do accounting for this, for whether it's for my taxes or, mm -hmm. or somebody asks for a, a, an annual report or something like that. Yeah, so a lot of that is planning, but as, as one of my colleagues said, uh, planning is where the rubber meets the sky. <laughs> <laughs> and so you have to plan like for where the rubber meets the road. And right, right. But, but the importance of planning is just, I, I think it's very important and, and do it regularly. Right, yeah. You know, review yeah. your situation and do it regularly. Well, it's, uh, you know, we could, we're here in the Philadelphia area. We can talk all about uh, how Ben Franklin uh, talked about planning and writing things down and, and, you know, actually having, if you write it down, it, you increase the chances of things uh, Getting done. Doing, getting done, actually doing it. Well, Charlie, thank you so much for being with us here at Cafe Columbia. And, uh, My pleasure, sir. <laughs> I know we'll be talking. Excellent.